Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Ken, thanks for watching. This is the third and final video that I'm doing for the Ghastly Ghost series. On the first video, we talked about the illustration process for the character design. On the second video, we talked about the cover design. And in this video, we are going to go through some of the interior artwork and the process that went through in creating that. Some of this stuff I can't show you because it's in the final book, so you're just gonna have to get the book but I'm still gonna show you a lot of good stuff here in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here are the main steps that I go through whenever I'm working on an interior of a book. First step is page breakdown. Number two is the thumbnails. Number three is the sketch. Four is the inking, and the fifth is coloring. Okay, so here we have a 32-page picture book uh, thumbnail template. And basically, what we're trying to do is break down the words into each of the pages. And that's where this first step happens. And actually, all these three steps probably happen kind of around the same time. <clears throat> so you're trying to break down all your words into each page. And sometimes what happens as well is that the publisher might already have a template where they've already broken down the pages for you. And you can use that as a reference when you're illustrating. But without knowing that, without knowing what words go where, you really don't know what artwork will go onto what page. So that's your first step. So what I'll do is I'll read the manuscript and break it down myself into the 32 page and try to figure out the main ideas and which one are the strongest that I can illustrate. And this is something that you can talk to with the art director as well. And more often than not, they're willing to work with you to get the page breakdown complete. And sometimes what happens, it what happened to me in one situation is actually we had to add a full spread to make the story flow properly because there was just too many things going on. and we just didn't have enough space. But that's the first main three steps that you need to figure out. So as you're breaking down the pages, the next step is you come up with the thumbnails or the sketches that describes or amplifies or highlights what's happening in that part of the story. And then once that's done, you jump into your inking process. At least in my case, I had to do some inking. Or you can just skip that and go into the coloring phase. So let's go ahead and look at some of the uh, thumbnails and sketches. So the process that I take when I'm working on an illustration for a book is I try to focus on the most exciting, interesting part of the book that I can draw. And from there, I work my way backwards. So if there's a particular scene in a book that's really intriguing to me and like just sparks my imagination, that's the one that I'll typically draw first. And I'll try to, you know, go into as much detail as I can. And then from there, I'll, I'll use the ideas, the energy from that one page and try to sketch out the other pages. So at this point, I don't really remember exactly what scene that is, but you'll probably see just by looking at it, which illustration has the most detail. That's probably the one that I spent a lot of time on. So here we've got the copyright page and you, you can see this is, looks very similar to the final illustration on the book, at least composition wise and the house and the, the whole vibe looks um, and feels the same. So we already have old Dave here coming out of his uh, truck and looking at the house. Here we have the first page where Dave enters the house and it's a little bit uneasy and kind of has that spooky vibe going on. Here he's starting to unload and you can actually see some of the difference from the final book. I have the main ideas here. He has the, um, the bear skin down on the ground like a carpet. There's the fireplace, we've got the mouse. The perspective on this page changed as well uh, based on um, one of my friends gave me that idea uh, to compose it in a different way where it creates 
kind of a claustrophobic feel and um, I'll show that to you in a bit. Here's the bathroom. And you can see here in this illustration, I actually have a creepy tentacle creature in the bath right there. That, that guy got removed later on. Here we have Dave looking out into the back. And here Dave's in the kitchen lonely by himself. And a lot of these uh, surprisingly uh, stayed the same from my original sketch. A lot of the composition wise um, remained the same. So this scene, I think this scene changed. This scene was, I think it's flipped actually. So it's an outdoor scene where the snow started getting really heavy at night. And here Dave is by himself playing a musical instrument. He's kind of getting lonely. So in a lot of these early illustrations, I have a lot of uh, ocean-related illustrations or nautical-type objects throughout the house. And that was replaced and changed later on. Here's Dave, he's spooked out. And I, I had to remove uh, I had to remove some of the words here. I'm not sure if I could actually show all the words. You'll just you'll just have to get the book for that. Here we have Dave in his bedroom, and again he's still kinda spooked out, he's haunted. He hears something here. He's looking out the window, and you can see how rough my early sketches are. It's really just finding the composition. And this is even rougher. You can see there's barely anything here. I think my my whole idea here was that this would be a spot illustration. Um, I don't think it turned out that way. Here's another, here's another one, Dave walking down. And the door opens because of the words. It just opened up the door and scared the heck out of him. This is changed as well from the final version. And as you can see, I'm actually on Ghastly uh, Thumbnails number four right here. And a lot of it has been added on from the previous version. A lot of it stayed the same. Here's Dave walking out. This one has changed as well. This actually, I kind of like this composition here. You can see Dave trekking out in the snow. And then here's Dave finally arriving at the old coal shed. And you can see how, you know, he's looking up and he's looking uh, vulnerable versus the coal shed as looks up, up high, looking down on him. It's become its own character in a way. And here's another one from a different different perspective. This is similar to one in the book, but it has changed as well a little bit. But you can see how scary that old coal shed looks, looking down on Dave. So those are the main pages. I'm not going to get into the other parts. You're just going to have to read the book for that one. Um, but you can see how rough everything is, and that's just how I usually create my thumbnails and my sketches. I've seen some people who create like these beautiful pieces of work for their sketches and it just blows my mind how they can do that. Mine, my style is a little bit different. It's very loose, let's just put it that way. And as I feel more confident with the sketches, then I'll slowly hone in and start working on the details and start building it like a, a Lego. Uh, but early in the process, I just want to play loose and just try to make my imagination work. But nothing is solidified or firm yet. Everything is kind of just floating around until it slowly comes together. So once I have some of the thumbnails, so once I have some of the thumbnails created, I'll usually send it piecemeal to the art director. 
I don't usually wait all the way until I'm finished with everything to send it. I want to get feedback right away, so I'll send it to them. And most of the time, what happens is they'll say, you know, I like some of these pages, but on some of these pages, can you show me something else? And that's when I create alternate pages that I send back. So I'm going to show you guys some of the alternate pages that I've done. So this is one where uh, Dave is walking downhill towards the old coal shed. So here's a different composition. Here's one for the ending of the book, and it has to show the, the old coal shed, which at the beginning was a scary character in the book, but now it looks sublime. And you have to also show Dave. So this is kind of a, one of those pages that's a little difficult to to make it work just because of all the uh, the elements happening and the distance between them. So here's another ending page. This is the one that made it to the book. So this composition right here. And it actually turned out quite well. And here's another alternate page that I believe this one made it to the book. So it replaced um, one of the pages where Dave is out in the middle of the snow. Uh, you can see in this one, in the book, the final book, it's actually just a one-story house. But here, in one of my earlier illustrations, I was envisioning it to be a two-story house. So Dave is walking down and he's feeling cold. Um, and again, you can see some of the, the nautical objects here. Here's another one. I think this is closer to what the final illustration is on the book. And same with this one. Here's another version of the exact same scene from a different perspective. Here's another version. This is Dave, he's jumping because he's super, super scared. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's not uncommon to create multiple illustrations for the same page. So once the sketches and the thumbnails are approved, then I go into the inking process. And let me show that to you. So here I have the uh, title page. And just because of the nature of, the, of this book, I, I have to do it in this style. In some other books, the whole inking process might be skipped and it's just straight into coloring. Here we've got the credits page. And as you can see, some of these I use grayscale to show you know what a particular object is or a particular area is just to create a, a, a separation so instead of just outlining the clouds I'll kind of just do a gray and here you can see I've inked the first page and you can already see some of the details come through the the wood uh, ceiling and I've left some space here where the words will go and some of these things I've already envisioned that it's going to be done in color. So I don't try to ink it all the way through. I leave some areas where I can where I can add color and create details there, especially with the wood here. Because the, the more inks I use, the more saturated on, and contrasty it's going to be. And it, it, it'll create a whole different vibe of, of book. It'll be a, it won't be a children's book anymore. It'll be really spooky. So I have to find that balance of having the details um, done in ink versus in the coloring process. So here again, I showed you earlier a different perspective. Uh, this one is looking down on Dave and you can see basically the, the same elements from my previous illustration, but now we've created a frame around Dave and now he's kind of trapped in this house in a way visually speaking again the bathroom same thing having some of the details in the ink and some of them done in color here in the backyard a lot of the things you don't see because it's in the color process or in the color portion kitchen Here's the outdoor. Again, you don't really even see that it's snowing. It's you can't visualize it here. But once I I put that into the color, then you'll you'll get that the whole feel of what's happening. Okay. Got Dave here. Okay. 
yeah, so I go through all that, the inking process, and then I submit this again, fine tuning it, it's just a lot of back and forth. And then once I'm happy with the way the inks look, then I jump into coloring. Okay, just to show you guys some of the colors, it's not too exciting. Uh, coloring is coloring to me. Um, There's some techniques out there that are useful, but for, for the style of Ghastly Ghost, it's pretty basic as far as the color. It's really sol a lot of solid colors and just shadows. Um, so there's nothing out of this world that if you're an artist or a digital artist that you probably can't replicate fairly easily. But let's go through just some of the examples here. So this, this page right here is the credits page. So this is how I originally envisioned it. And as, as you can see, um, it's pretty basic. Dave is going into the house. And let me show you the, the version after. So this is what it looks like for the final version. And I've, as you can see, there's just a, a drastic change as far as the look of having the snow. And it really sets the tone because weather plays a big role in, in the story itself. So you can see here that it's snowier. There's snow throughout. And just even the vividness of the finished product makes a huge difference. And I think that's one of the things that I had to keep reminding myself is that it needs to pop, especially when you're designing in CMYK, because once it goes into print, um, it usually looks duller in print unless you really make it saturate. So not having access to not having access to the the publisher's printers, it's it's hard to tell what it's going to look like in the final product, and I trust that the art director and the publishers will tell me, you know, if something will not look good in the final product. Because I mean, once you print it in your home printer, it looks great. But once it hits their printer, it might look totally different. So I keep I keep reminding myself that I have to make things a little bit punchier in the, the coloring process so that I know that when it hits their printers that it'll look great. Here's another, here's the first page. And as you can see, I was talking earlier about adding some of the details in the coloring itself rather than in the inking stage. And you can see here, I've added a lot of the strokes, the patterns on the, the wood walls the, in the color itself rather than in the inking. And I try to soften the inking by creating an overlay. So rather than using a straight black for the ink, I'll try to make it a little duller so it'll blend more with the rest of the art and give it a softer feel. Again, you can see some of the, the color contrasting, some of the shadows. Still, it's, a, it's loose, but it's okay for, for what we're trying to do. So it's a lot of solid colors, creating shadows, adding highlights, and gradients as you're coloring it. So you can see the soft, softer shadow here versus having a, a hard shadow here. So it's trying to figure out the lighting. So here we have the page that I was referring to. So here is where Dave's unpacking and again adding some of the details in the color rather than in the inking stage. So you can see some of the patterns of the floor is done on the coloring stage and some of the patterns on the bear too. Same thing with the box and this the chair and even in the wooden chest. So just adding a lot of those details in the coloring stage. And talking about making the colors pop, here's the final version. You can see after some feedback from the art director and some trial and error on the coloring process, trying to get the colors to work out. You need to get that color harmony together. So you can see my blue on the chair is punchier. The walls are brighter. The wooden beams have changed. 
and even the uh, the little mouse's outfit. Actually, the outfit was one of those things that um, the publishers wanted it removed, but then later down the road, we wanted it. They wanted it back again. So uh, that little mouse has been naked a few times. So, yeah, you can see the evolution of the interior pages. All right, well, that wraps up this video. Make sure to click like, click subscribe. If you haven't seen the other videos, make sure to check those out too. Visit me on my website, rabbleboy.com, where you can check out my other books. Follow me on social media. Get Ghastly Ghost. It's available everywhere. Make sure to get it. Buy it. Buy one for your friends. Share it with everybody. All right. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.